I'm a welder. I use electricity to melt pieces of metal together. And I used to work for an aerospace manufacturer that made jet engines. And I welded for them. And I was one of those employees that took a lot of pride in my work. I was good, and I knew it. I came in early every day. My welds looked beautiful. You could hang them up like they were artwork. And I always did my best. But my best wasn't good enough. And I was replaced. And whether I want to admit it or not, my replacement was a better welder than I was. My replacement could weld faster, more consistently. And my replacement wasn't just there early, my replacement was there all the time, because my replacement was a robot. But that was years ago, and today I'm not just a welder. Today, I'm a robotic engineer, and I'm developing robots that displace other people the same way those welding robots did to me. And I'm seeing something change, I'm seeing a difference. Because the robots that are being developed now are smarter. And looking back on my own journey, I can see some similarities or some critical aspects that I want to share with you. You see, I wanted to find out about how this scrap of metal, this motors and computer could do something better than I could do on my best day. So I started learning something new. I was practicing learning something new every day. And I bought a microcontroller and I started teaching myself how to program. And I also started going back to school for engineering. I had to find out something to do. And when I was going back to school, I was running a small welding business. And somebody approached me and asked me to do some welding for them. They asked me to build this frame on the back of a golf cart. I had no idea what it was. And once again, my curiosity was piqued. I wanted to learn something new. And I found out that they were going to tow somebody from a golf cart. They were actually going to pull somebody and make them run 15 miles an hour and measure the force that it took to do that. I also learned that this was part of a larger military robotics project called 4MM, where the military wanted to make super soldiers that were capable of running a four-minute mile. It also turned out that the researcher that asked me to do that welding, he was here from France on a visa, and his visa was about to expire. So through a turn of events, I ended up developing the world's first robotic exoskeleton that's actually capable of augmenting your human capabilities, making it easier to run. And now this robot is smart, but that's not what I'm talking about. The robot was capable of knowing your motions and understanding its environment to help you, not hurt you. But in order to understand what I'm really talking about with robots getting smart, we need to talk about what a robot is. Now, when I say robot, many of you probably think something like this. A vacuum that goes around cleaning your floor, or maybe something you've seen in a movie, or maybe you don't really know what a robot is. But it's so much more than that. Because the truth is, any one of us could go down to a dealership today and drive home a robot. The cars of today are capable of knowing what lane you're in, augmenting your driving capability, preventing you from getting into a wreck. By all means, that's a robot, right? In fact, what many of you have brought with you today, I would consider a robot as well. Your phones are capable of processing data, capable of controlling your house, your thermostat, your lights. And if a phone can be a robot, then how about software? You know, companies are utilizing big data, processing millions of data points faster than a human could ever do to spit out answers, to spit out information. They're using this capability in ways we've never imagined. In fact, your phone is probably capable of unlocking based on facial recognition. And Google is even using the same technology to generate keywords, to recognize certain artifacts. And I know what you all like to do on the internet. And that recognition is actually being used for kitty recognition as well. But what does that mean? It means that there's no finite definition of a robot because robotics is changing all the time. We're coming up with new ways to utilize robotics. But that's not even what it's about. You see, I work for one of the world's largest aviation manufacturers. I work in research and development. And one of my customers is the military. They depaint aircraft. They actually have to go and sand these aircraft and remove the paint to see what's underneath, make sure the plane is still airworthy. And the robots that I'm developing, we're using industry. It's not just me doing this. But we have a robot that we're developing that can go up to a plane, not just a particular plane, but any plane. And what would normally take 30 to 40,000 hours to program can be done by the robot itself in under a minute. The robot is capable of programming itself. This is the change that I'm talking about. Robots 
are getting smarter. And it's applicable in so many ways that we can't even imagine where it can be applied. But what's critical is that's something that we can do as humans right now. We can get smarter, right? In fact, that technology that's being used to identify kittens for your browsing pleasure is also being used to identify abnormalities in x-rays. It's happening right now. Somebody that went to school as a radiologist and thinks that they are perfectly secure. There's technologies branching out in so many different ways. And when you think about the long-term effects of it, when you go to the hospital and your radiologist is looking at some x-ray that you have to determine what's wrong with you, and they've worked a 12-hour shift, and they're tired, and they're fatigued. Well, guess what? Robots don't get fatigued. They get better. And those sanding robots that I'm working on, it's actually being driven based on ergonomics. The workers that do that work right now sand with hand, heavy sanders over their head all day. Rotator like rips are the most common issue, and they're breathing cancerous, causing hexavalent chromium. The point is, is that robots are going to impact each and every one of our lives. Surgeons will be able to operate across the globe. They already are using this technology. But the real key point here is that it doesn't mean that jobs are just going to disappear. Amazon has recently invested nearly three quarters of a billion dollars in their robotics. But they've also created 100,000 new jobs. But those jobs are highly technical, skilled jobs. You see, what this means is that we all have a chance to learn something new. And just like my story, a welder learning robotics, a robotic engineer learning how to give a talk in front of thousands of people, we never know what opportunities are going to come from it. I'm not saying you need to go learn about robotics. I'm saying you need to learn something. You need to push yourself outside of that comfort zone. Because then you will create opportunities. You control your own luck. And whether you're retired or young, especially if you're retired, it's your duty to make sure that the new generations, the younger generations, get to this sooner. Get to learn things, because it's going to impact them so much more. Even restaurants are opening up fully autonomously. They literally have robotic chefs or robotic bartenders, jobs that new, normal students would use to put themselves through school. And the main thing that I want you to take away from this is that today, my robots learned something new. What did you learn? Thank you.